Ali, my name is Macy Nagata, and as they mentioned, I'm from the island of Palau in Micronesia. And my project this summer was to research the effects of planting styles on the abundance of nitrogen-fixing bacteria in a taro patch. And before I get into all the science and the research, I wanted to share a uh, mo'olelo from my island home. And it is a story about Ilawo, and she is a woman demigod who cultivated and created Palau's, Palau's taro patches. So the story goes that she begins in the centermost state of Palau and she creates the first taro patch. Then she moves up north and creates taro patches up there. And then she does that for all the villages until she moves down south. But the thing is, uh, for demigods, every village they go to, they change their names, uh, change their identities. But she had the same responsibility for every village she went to. And so now back home, when you go to each village, there's a different taro patch uh, style. There's, a dif there's different planting styles and different methods that go into creating it. Like you can say it's unique to each village. And you can kind of translate that into the idea that um, it's almost like she knew that these different conditions at each village would affect these nitrogen fixing bacteria. So she had to like adjust them a little to make the, ta make the taro able to grow in those villages. I wanted to study this because I find taro to be so important. It's a staple crop in places like, the Af like Africa, the West Indies, Asia, and most importantly, us Pacific Islanders. It gives us food security. It's always good to know where our food's coming from, what's put into growing it, and it makes us less dependent on imported goods. Cultural identity. As a Palawan woman, these taro patches have such great uh, cultural significance. Back home, our, back home, Palau is a matrilineal society, so women have a big role when it comes to society and cultural matters. And these taro patches show a woman's responsibility and her ability to feed for, to provide for herself and her family, but also her status in her clan and her village. Taro patches are also important when it comes to cultural revitalization. As we can see here at Hay and Kavainui with the organization Kaulu Akalana, uh, these taro patches are ways to show, teach uh, culture and they're also opportunities to pass down these important uh, cultural knowledges. So with that being said, nitrogen is such an important element when it comes to agriculture because it's a big factor when it comes to the productivity and yield of crops. And so taro plants and uh, taro plants use two main, two main forms of nitrogen for, its, for different processes that are important to its growth, uh, which are ammonium and nitrite, nitrate. And so those are the two that we see here. And when nitrogen enters the soil system, it goes, oh, soil system, it goes through a whole cycle of microbial processes. And that starts off with nitrogen fixation. And so that's basically where atmospheric nitrogen is brought into the soil by nitrogen fixing bacteria. And those bacteria are, they have to have the gene NIFH in order to be able to do that process. And from nitrogen fixation, it is converted into ammonium, which is, which is what the plant likes to use for food. And then it's transformed into another form of nitrogen by nitrification. And that's, also, that's another form of food for the plant. And the last step of the nitrogen cycle would be denitrification, which is where these microbes that, are, that have the gene NERS take that plant, the plant's food, that nitrogen, and release it back into the air. So it's a loss of nitrogen for the plants. And it's released back into the air as ni atmospheric nitrogen. Um, the, the studying the nitrogen for the nitrogen in taro patches is important because we'd be able to identify the planting styles that produce and maintain ideal amounts of nitrogen. 
and with that knowledge we'd be able to adjust these different planting styles to be able to control the level of nitrogens in taro patches. So when it comes to taro, taro farming, there are two main planting styles, which are wetland or flooded systems. And that one is the one that's most common back home in Palau. Most of our taro patches are wetland, are flooded systems, but there's also dry land or upland farming. So for my study, I, sam I took soil samples from taro patches in here in Kavai Nui and for wetland plots and then dry, dry land plots down in Manu. And I took a total of 36 soil samples. And the way that I collected the samples was based on the irrigation system of the taro patches. So the one you see on your left is the wetland plots. And I collected samples at where the water enters the plot right in the middle of the plot and where the water exits the plot. And that's for wetland. But for dry land, it's a little, it's a bit of a different system where instead it's groundwater that is pumped, uh, pumped up and uh, distributed through a drip system. So instead we just measured 20 by 40 feet plots and then collected soil samples within that plot. And with those soil samples, I did DNA extractions and use that DNA to, and to quantify that DNA to find, to identify, to quantify, sorry, to quantify the NIF-H, which is linked to that nitrogen fixing bacteria and their S, which is linked to denitrification to see um, what, poten what potential bacteria there were who were doing these uh, transformations. And so from a previous study, uh, it kind of gives us an overall picture of the nitrogen fixing community within the Lo'i. And it is divided by, oh, and uh, our x axis would be the planting style. So we have wetland on the left and dry land here on the right. And then a relative abundance of these nitrogen fixing bacteria. And this chart specifically is divided um, depending on divided by the different nitrogen metabolisms and with that we see that there are more denitrifiers than there are end fixers and there's all and in general there's more nitrogen cycling bacteria in wetlands than there are in dryland and that's a trend that we see throughout the data and this is the that same set of data but it's divided by the genus and it, def it focuses more on the nitrogen fixation. So you can already see that there's a greater diversity of nitrogen fixers within the wetland. And these different colors represent different genuses. Mm -hmm. And we also saw that there was a higher diversity of nit denitrifiers in the wetlands. So this is the same thing where we have the, wet, the planting styles as our X axis and then our relative abundance as our Y. And here are the diff different genuses that there were found within the Lo'i. And this is just on denitrification. Okay, so then we did qPCR to, 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 further, to further specify that data to see really how, see the specific um, quantification of these um, bacteria. So on our X axis, we have the two different genes. So that our left is the nitrogen fixing G bacteria. And then on our right is the denitrification. And then our Y axis is the copies of, copies of the, those genes per gram of soil. And so we can see that even with a higher level of a higher amount of denitrifying bacteria, there's, it also comes with a higher amount of, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, with a higher amount of denitrifying bacteria, there was also still a pretty significant amount of denitrif denitrifying bacteria. And that can be linked back to the nitrogen cycle as we see here. 
So, like as we see here, like, and we did a statistics, and then the data is the data. The differences between the two data are were pretty found to be pretty significant. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, it was observed that um, in wetlands, not only were they more diverse but there was more denitrification, but at the same time, it also had more nitrogen fixation. And for the dry land, even though it had less denitrification, it also had less nitrogen fixation. So there isn't really a planting style that's, you could, we could say, ideal, because the, the amounts of these bacteria are almost the same. So instead of deciding on just one planting style to use, we can just cultivate these taro patches in ways that uh, support the nitrogen fixing bacteria. And we're just, we just need to be more mindful of the microbial communities within the lo'i. And here are some thank you to the people who uh, helped me with my project and made this possible. And so long and thank you and I'll take any questions.